Hi there. Thanks for tuning in to this fourth installment in the Making Cyberglad series. If you're tuning in for the first time, I'm building a game called Cyberglad using the Godot game engine. After the previous episode, we have something that's starting to look like a game, but that doesn't offer a challenge to the player. We have an arena with a player and an NPC character. The player character can be controlled by the player. It can move and attack the NPC. When the NPC takes damage, an animated head-up display registers its decreasing health until it has no hit points left. When that happens, the NPC character disappears and the game is finished. Now as long as the NPC doesn't fight back, this won't be much of a game, so let's change that today. I'm going to build a basic AI that will control the NPC character and make it move and attack the player character. The AI will be controlled in the process function that's executed at every frame. As long as the NPC is alive, it will either move or attack. For the moment, we want NPCs, NPCs sorry, to move towards the player at all times in a straight line. So let's go to my NPC script. And I'm going to add these two functions. These two functions will get the NPC moving in the player character's direction when they are called. They're using the move and slide function from the kinematic body 2D object, just like we do for the player. We don't want it to be able to attack as soon as it becomes in range, otherwise it would be unplayable. So we'll set an AI think time attribute to set up and set up a timer as soon as the game loads. So I'm setting up a default AI think time of 0.7 seconds. Humans typically have a think time of around 0.2 or 0.3 seconds, so it's not that challenging at the moment. On my, in my onReady function, I'm going to set up the AI think time timer, or at least I'm going to call the function that sets it up. And I need the function that actually does the setting up. So this, this is just the function that sets up the timer. It doesn't actually start it. The timer will be started when the NPC comes into range of the player. The process function will call a decide to attack function that starts the timer. If both characters are still alive and in range by the time the timer finishes counting, the NPC will attack the player. A character will only be allowed to attack another character if their target state is zero, meaning that the target character is alive. Remember that I had the state attribute at character level that has value zero or one, alive or dead. We'll be checking the state value of characters often, so let's add a getter on this attribute in the character script. So I'm going to move to my character script. Remember that the character script is, so both the NPC and the player scripts extend from the character script. Here is the state attribute, and I'm going to add this getter function. Now we can write our decide to attack function in the NPC script and the trigger to the actual attack function when the AI think time timer completes. So I'm going to move back to my NPC script, and I have my decide to attack function that starts the timer. And I have another function that triggers the attack function in the character script. Um, when the timeout completes, when the timer timeout completes, and the character is in range and both characters are still alive. Finally, let's write the process function that will orchestrate these NPC actions. So the process function that's called it on every frame by Godot will decide whether the NPC will attack or move, or will decide to attack or move. Notice that while I'm adding an artificial think time before the AI can attack, there's no such think time for movement. So the NPC will start moving as soon as the game begins. We'll see how that plays out. So let's run the game. I'm going to move to this window. And you see that the NPC is slowly coming towards the player to attack. I'm going to help him out a little bit. And there you see he's attacking me. Ooh. All right. We have an error here. As a problem, so the game crashes when the NPC keeps trying to attack the player character after it has died. That's because I'm calling the getState function after I perform the QFree on the player node. You can't request attribute values for a node that doesn't exist anymore. To fix this, 
I'm just going to apply the QFree function to the character's collision shape 2D node instead of the root node. So first of all, let's move back to the editor. I'm going to, sorry, stop the game. There, and then I'm going to move back to the character scripts. I'm going to declare a variable that will just be a handle to the character's um, collision shape 2D node that manages collisions. And I'm going to change the call to QFree in the take damage function here when health is below, below or equal to zero, meaning that the character dies. Instead of doing a QFree on the entire character, I'm just going to do to call QFree on the collision shape node. It's enough for the sprite to disappear and for the character to stop registering collisions. We don't need to remove the entire character entirely. Okay, let's test it again. All right, and now let's fight back. Huh? Let's see if it's still attacking me. It is still attacking me. Ooh, ah, he still got me. All right, but it worked this time. Now we can keep attacking the NPC after he's died and I get no error and vice versa. So now let's make things a little bit more interesting. In its current state, the game consists of moving your character to the NPC and clicking repeatedly as fast as you can on the attack button to kill it before it kills you. Aside from any repetitive strain injuries that that might cause, it doesn't make for a particularly compelling game experience. So what can we do to sl slow the game down somewhat? Well. The only friction in the game at the moment is in the think time. And by this I mean both the human think time for the player and the artificial think time that we introduced on the NPC side. I want to go a step further and introduce the notion of reflexes. I said earlier that each character would have a reflexes attribute that would determine how fast it would be able to attack. Let's put that into practice. I'm going to add an attack delay value in the character's ready function based on the character's reflexes. I'm also setting up another timer, this time an attack timer with the timeout equal to the attack delay. So in my character script, because this will apply both to NPCs and to player characters, I'm going to add a couple of new variables. Set up an attack timer, I'm creating an attack delay, and by default it will have a very high value. It will have to be set in the, the real value will have to be set in the ready function. And the can attack flag um, then that I'm going to sp speak about in a, in a moment, that, that it will be true by default. And so in my on ready function, that remember is called by the ready function, I'm going to initialize the, or sorry, set the attack delay function as a function of reflexes, and I'm going to set up an attack timer. And of course, I have to add a function that actually does the setting up. And I also have to decide what I'm going to do. I'm going to put them over the signal functions. I have to also decide what I'm going to do when the attack timer timeout completes. When the attack timer times out, I'm sending a new attribute can attack to true. At the end of each call to the attack function, I'm freezing attacks for this uh, for this character until the attack timer times out. So I still need to do this. So I'm going to freeze attacks at the end of the attack function. So here, the attack, I'm causing damage to my target, and then I'm freezing attacks. And of course, what the freeze attacks function will do is simply setting the can attack flag back to false and then starting a new attack timer for the character. To finish this new feature, I need to check whether can attack is set to true before attacking. For the NPC, this means changing both the process and the on AI think time timeout complete functions. So yes, this is different for the NPC and for the player. So in the NPC script, I'm going to change the process function so I'm just going to overwrite it, but it's actually just small changes. I'm just checking the can attack here um, to decide when, uh, when the uh, NPC 
uh, has to decide whether to decide to attack or to move. And my on AI think time timeout completes needs to be changed as well. This last function needed to be updated because the context of the game might have changed during the AI think time. The player might have moved out of the NPC's melee combat range, or it may have died in the meantime. For the player, the input function needs to be updated. So let's move to my, so let's save the NPC script and move to my player script. And I have my input function. So of course, the player is, uh, the player character is player controlled. And so I'm going to change it there to take the can attack flag into account. So now we have attack timers for both the player and the NPC whose duration depends on the character's innate reflexes. You can't just blindly attack constantly anymore. You have to make sure to be in range when you can attack your opponent and then make sure you're out of range of their own attacks in between. So there's an element of timing. The gameplay is still very basic, but it should already be playable in its current, in its current state. So let's test it. So I'm going to run the game. Right. Okay, let's try to move out of range there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Almost got him, and I got him. All right. So we have a working game now, but the NPC is always the same, so it could get boring quickly. Let's add some variety by introducing three NPC configurations that you can play against. For that, I need to set the value of a variable somewhere that is going to change my NPC specs. So first of all, I'm going to change the onReady function of my NPC script. And instead of hard coding the attributes of my NPC, I'm going to make it dependent on a variable called NPC name that will be in the, specified in the global script. I've ranked them, so I've, I've introduced three new NPCs, uh, NPC configuration, and I've called each NPC, I've given them a, a name, I've called them Ernie, Bert, and Kermit, and each has different attributes. I've ranked them in order of increasing difficulty as opponents. We have Ernie, who's slow and weak, like a lame donkey. We have Bert, who's fast, but vulnerable, like a cheetah. We have Kermit, who has average speed, but who's very strong and resilient, like a monster toad. The name of the NPC to be loaded in the game will be decided in the auto-loaded global script that we introduced in the previous episode. So in, I've got to change my global script now. So here, the global script basically always returns. I'm going to talk about max health in a, in a moment. But um, I'm going to set an NPC name variable to Ernie, and I have to set the NPC max health value here too. Yeah, remember that we need to do this here rather than the, in the NPC script because we need this value to load the HUD before the characters are loaded into the scene. Check out my previous video for details about that. Now let's test the game to see how challenging it is. We already know that Ernie isn't much of a challenge, but he'll follow me around and he'll get me eventually if I'm too slow. Let's change the default NPC to Bert. All right, and let's play the game. Can move to the game window. All right, oh, woo, okay, try to hit him. Oh. And I, I got him. Whew. That was hard though. All right. Yeah, so suddenly it's a lot more difficult because Bert is significantly faster than Ernie, both in terms of movement speed, but also of reflexes. In the next episode, I'll let, player, I'll let the player decide which NPC they want to fight. 
Building a basic AI was surprisingly easy. Sometimes tasks, tasks appear overwhelming, but they're actually not all that difficult. Whereas tweaking your user interface or trying to integrate artwork just right can be a lot more time consuming. Of course, we've only scratched the surface in terms of what a combat AI could do, and we'll revisit this simplistic first iteration many times in the future. Here are some resources if you want to dig deeper already into building an AI using Godot Engine. You can fi find all the links below in um, the video description. Gong Ki has a tutorial on building an AI that follows you around in a platformer, and he integrates line of sight constraints. PigDev made a tutorial that illustrates steering behaviors to make NPC movement and directions, uh, direction changes more fluid. Umai Pixel bit a pl uh, built a platformer tutorial where he makes extensive use of raycasting to decide NPC beha behavior. And finally, Kids Can Code has a great multi-part tutorial, tutorial for which he built an entire top-down tank game to illustrate how AI and pathfinding works in Godot Engine. But if you want to take a step back and get a global perspective on game AI separate from any engine-specific considerations, I recommend a great YouTube video by The Happy Cat. Her game-related channel is just fantastic. In the next episode, I'll create a splash screen that will let the player choose which NPC they want to fight. That's it for making Cyberglass 4. You can check out the game by downloading it from the cyberglass.com website. So, just show that on the website by clicking on this button. You can download the latest version, Windows only for now. If you do, you can already pick one of the three opponents. Let me know if you're able to beat them all. Kermit is even tougher than Bert. Thanks for listening.